Good morning. Oh, sorry. Good afternoon, everybody. How you doing? Morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, we've only got a few here. You can unmute yourself so I can get some uh, get some feedback. So today we're uh, working with sellers, and I thought I saw Keith's Keith's. Uh, is he up there? There we go. I'm here. Hi, Keith. Hi. I gotta turn off my stuff here. You're stuck here. Thank you. Thank you for the chocolates. It's helping me survive <laughs> for a late lunch today. Yeah. Uh, and I see we've got a couple of veterans. Carol, welcome. Okay, so uh, give me some feedback, guys. What what you would like me to talk about specifically here in in working with sellers? I've I've got lots of topics. You, you know, I can talk for a few hours here, but I can go through the basics as to as to what you do when you first get a lead and you're going over to meet with the sellers. I can talk about presenting the market analysis. Um, we can talk about following up. Uh, working with sellers also covers offers. I can talk about um, presenting offers or how to write the best offers in this marketplace, um, especially with the sellers. Uh, in the seller's market that we're in. And I've also got stuff here we can talk about multiple offers, which is uh, common in the in the market today. Any comments, guys? What would you like to hear? All right, gotta give me some feedback. I'd like to start with a general overview of... Um... Uh, after the first I didn't hear that. Uh, Michelle, was that you? No? I thought it was Michael. Yeah, that was Michael. I'm interested in the first two topics that you brought up. The first, the first couple about your, in your first, the first meeting? Yes. Okay. All right. Excellent. Well, We'll, we'll start there and uh, I might hit on, um, that's for your, first, for your first appointment and when you're first talking with a potential seller. And then I think I'll go into, into multiple offers because that's, that's a, a hot button in today's, uh, in today's market here. Fair okay, so uh, does anybody want to share, Carol, since I've got, got you and, and Keith, um, let's say you, you get a call from a uh, referral, since I'm sure that's what you're mostly working with right now. Uh, what, what's your first response uh, to someone that calls you and says, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about selling my house? Mm. Okay, that's great. Uh, where are you planning on moving to? <laughs> okay. Trying to find out if I need to be prepared to uh, connect them with a realtor uh, at this point, usually out of state. Um, and I have a great network in that. And I usually recommend that we do talk about what market value is so we have an idea of where they can they can purchase, you know, what okay. they're looking into purchasing. Good. Also time frame. Yes. Time frame, yeah, excellent. Okay, so I've got, I've got both of those um, um, notes here. So typically when you get when you get this lead, whether this is something that you're prospecting for or somebody calls you or, or it's a referral from a friend, um, usually the first thing I say is I, I tell them uh, that you know, it's, a, it's a two step process. I like to uh, first make an appointment where I can come by, just take a few minutes where you can show me around the property and then I'd like to come back and present my market analysis. And I, I tell them, you know, you're under no obligation. I do this as a service uh, for, my potential, for my potential clients. So that's my canned speech when I, when I first meet them. And if, if you remember uh, for both Keith and, 
and Carol uh, back in the uh, ferry days. Um, he, he, I think he was originally from Colorado or something, and he was doing 300 transactions a year. And, and his guerrilla marketing, he said that um, he would only uh, meet with them one time. He would go over to the house, bring over the comps, sit down with them, and list the property, or he would move on because he didn't have any, he didn't have time. He didn't have time to come back and, and, and do all of that. Well, obviously, in, in our world, our prices are high. And if we're doing even one transaction a month, we're into six figures here. We're making, we're, we're making good money. So I always make it a, a, a two-step process. I don't want to be surprised by the house because a lot of times our records are not accurate as far as bedrooms and baths and, and, and the description of the, of the property. So uh, plus, as uh, both Keith and Carol mentioned, it also gives me the opportunity to ask questions. And I prefer doing this on that first appointment. So I tell them it's a, it's a two-step process. I, I, I close on an appointment. And I just tell them it's just going to take me a couple of minutes to walk through the property. And they're saying, oh, well, you know, it's not ready or whatever it is. And uh, so I try, to, I try to get that appointment as, as quickly as I can. The key to this is not only that, that you get to see the property. I also I take a picture of the front of the house because I'm gonna use that, uh, that street view in my market analysis. And uh, Danny did a great um, uh, cloud CMA last week and it shows a picture of the house. We have a, a CMA online, the one that, the one that I use um, and, and all of the, the, the paperwork that's involved in that. And so I'm not gonna go through the CMA today, but uh, I'll go through some of the, the presentation topics. Uh, so I need to take a picture of the house. And then what's key to this first meeting is to ask these questions. And like you mentioned, um, when I'm first talking with them, I'm going to say, you know, I usually ask them, I said, hey, would you like to show me around? Because typically that seller will highlight things that they think is important. You know, whether they, they built this back room or they put the molding on or whatever they think is, is important. And so you got to take, you know, very good notes on, on all of the comments that that seller is, uh, uh, is stating to you. Uh, find out what their motivation to sell, to sell is, you know, why are they selling? Um, where are they moving to? As, as Carol mentioned, uh, do they need help with a referral um, in looking at properties? You know, do they have an idea what the price range is, where they're buying? whatever they're going to do, get behind that motivation as to why, why they wanna sell the property. And as Keith mentioned, what is your time frame? You know, is this something that you know, your husband got transferred on a job and he's already back east and, and you wanna to move today versus, yeah, you know, we're looking at stuff and you know, we're not sure, you know, maybe at the end of the year or, or, or whatever. But so it's important, it's important to know what that motivation is for your seller. Um, also ask if, if you have a price in mind. And there's a couple ways to get around this. You can say, have you had the property appraised before? Or have you talked uh, to other agents? What, what do you think your property is worth? So some way that you can, you know, I like to be soft and, and fuzzy when I'm going in there, not to be, not to be hard to sell, but, but try to ask that uh, if they've received any estimates of value of their property before, so that you can get an idea as to whether or not they're going to be realistic when you do your, your market analysis. Okay, so you've got that information. Um, you go back, you, you put together the CMA, and I always tell them that it's going to take a couple of days to do my market analysis, and I'll schedule that appointment. Uh, as you know, We've, we've done enough of these that I can knock them out here in, in less than an hour. But uh, I, I present this really nice booklet uh, that we have online. And I, I want them to, to, to think that it's, hey, this, we've really put some effort in this. This is going to take a couple of days. Uh, not something that um, you know, I whipped up on the computer and I can, I can be back in an hour to present it to you. So I schedule that uh, next appointment to present that market analysis. And I'll, and I'll go through some of, the, some of the points that I focus on when I'm presenting that CMA. So um, as I flip through it, and I basically use that booklet or that market analysis 
as my presentation booklet. And I usually start off right at the summary of properties. That's um, when you do a CMA, you get a one page sheet and it lists everything that's for sale that's sold off market. And it just gives you, and it gives you some uh, median prices at the bottom of each, of each uh, type of property, each, the status of each property. So I'll usually focus on that and, and then we'll flip to the uh, details. If there's a couple properties that are for sale, um, I, can, I can show them, oh, here's a picture of the house. Here's the agent's remarks, it's upgraded or it's a fixer or, or whatever. And, and what's important, again, this is not the CMA uh, workshop, but it's what's important, especially when you're meeting with that seller is to have these uh, comps bracket that subject property. So you want it real obvious that there's a home in there that is better than theirs and a home in there that's less value than theirs. Because a the seller, you know, if you're telling it, oh yeah, all of these comps are 500, the seller's gonna come back and say, well, you know, I think mine's 550, right? So you've gotta show something that's maybe 525 that has a pool or has uh, upgrades or a new kitchen or whatever um, at that top price and then something that the fixer that's in the 475, so that it's very easy for somebody to get a price range of maybe 5% is, is my goal as to what that value is. Obviously, you know, we can't uh, get it down to a couple thousand dollars, especially these million dollar homes because they can easily vary $50,000 $50, in price. But what we do know in this marketplace is that whatever those comps are, that property is gonna sell for more. I mean, that's the, that's the reality because everything that we're seeing now has multiple buyers. I think every listing out there that I've seen here in the last couple of weeks has had 12 buyers that were qualified to purchase that home. So when you're in that type of a marketplace, your, your comps are gonna tell you what the last one sold for, but not what this property is worth. And, and that's a good price to put as a starting price, whatever that market analysis states, because we know that that's going to be a low price uh, in this marketplace. Obviously you don't wanna go real high because uh, you're gonna to have to come down in another month or two and that listing's gonna get old, but everything now is, is selling. So uh, you need to bracket those comps so that it's obvious if I'm using that $500,000 example, that they know that it's 500 and not 525, even though it's gonna sell for 525 in this, in this market. Okay, um, it, if there's questions, raise your hand, yell out, do, do something. Otherwise I'll just keep uh, rambling on here. Um, so I focus on that um, uh, summary page and I'll, and I'll flip through so that it's obvious to them. I try to get some feedback uh, from the seller as to what their values are. And then I conclude, I said, hey, you know, you know looking at these um, uh, seven sales, these three listings, these off markets, uh, you know as much as I do about the, about the market price, what do you think the value is, right? And I already have my value printed. So it's not like I'm uh, uh, you know, gonna be adjusting my price because I open the first page in my market analysis actually has my price. I mean, that's, that's how I start this, start this off. I just don't disclose it when I have the opportunity to sit down and meet with them. Um, uh, so depending on what they say, uh, for example, if we're looking at 500,000, if they come back and they say, oh, well, you know, it's worth, I think it's worth 475, uh, you can show them a couple of comps and say, well, I don't think there will be any problem getting that. In fact, I would recommend you know a list price of five hundred thousand or four ninety nine to get that. On the other hand, if they say, "Oh, it's worth five fifty, you know, you you go right to that that comp that's that's higher, or hopefully a couple of comps, and say, "Well, look, you know, these sold for five twenty five. They're larger. You know, they have a new kitchen, new bathrooms, whatever." So that ho hopefully it's obvious that um, uh, they know that it's not worth that five twenty five. You know, you can't reach across the table and slap them and say, hey, look at this and put this paper in your face. So you gotta be able to, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta be able to show them with your, um, uh, with your, with your paperwork. Okay, so after, we got, after we've established some type of value, 
then I go into that marketing your listing. It's one of the pages that I have and it lists uh, um, all, the, all the different things that you're going to do uh, to find that buyer and get this property sold. Um, back in the day, when, you know, when I started, uh, Century 21 was our biggest competitor back then and they had a 21 step marketing plan. And so at, at Frederick's Realty, I don't know if, if Carol or Keith, if you remember this or not, but our, our plan was 22 steps because we actually, ours was better. We had a 22 step uh, marketing plan. So uh, that marketing plan is, is online. You can see all of that on our uh, website uh, and it's in a Word doc so you can change it any way that you want to, uh, to, to personalize it. But I basically go through those steps. So again, I've got this, this CMA that, you know, it's 50 pages long. All I'm focusing on is that summary sheet. And then I go to your marketing, your listing, and I'll go down those items. And if you're a new agent, you can just read them off because it, uh, sellers don't know, don't know what the process is in selling their home. And there's a lot of steps that we go through. And so they, you're educating them uh, as you go through all of these different steps. And then you, you try to close on, these, on some of these steps. For example, you know, one of the things that we do is I'll tell them, I don't know what number it is, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll order a termite report. And part of my team uh, is Andy's termite. And I can get Andy to come out and inspect your house and give you a free report at no cost to you. But this is important so that you'll know if there's going to be some expense down the road uh, so that we can prepare for that. Would you prefer an appointment next Tuesday or Wednesday? Would Wednesday be better for me to schedule Andy's termite to come out and look at your house, right? So if you close on these minor points, um, and typically what happens is they'll, depending on the type of seller, they're going to come back and they're going to say, oh, hey, you know, I'm just, we're just looking at price and we're not looking to buy until, you know, 2050 or something. Um, and that's fine. So then you can kind of zip through it. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, here's my thing. Call me. And then you can do a follow up with them. But if they say, oh, you know, hey, Wednesday's fine. Right. The light bulb goes off and, and this is what you want. So you close on another one. You know, we part of my team. I have a professional photographer. We come out and we will photograph your house inside, outside. We do a, a virtual tour that we can post online. I can, I can schedule Danny No uh, for uh, Thursday or Friday. You know, which day do you prefer for that? So you, if you can close on those points, you know you've got yourself a, a, an interested uh, seller at this point. All right, and then um, uh, if we're moving forward, if they're making these appointments, I'll explain the commission uh, process, my schedule of commission on, on my sheet. I have it from two to 5%. And I show them, I go, the, the most that you'll be charged is only 5% from uh, TRG. I split that with cooperating agents. If I sell the property or if my team sells the property is what we're using now, meaning Danny, is that we, we will only charge you 4%. If you have a buyer or a neighbor or somebody that's interested in the property, it's only gonna be 2% or 1%, whatever you have on your, on your schedule. But this is all part of that market analysis and so they realize that, oh, that 5% is going to be the maximum. And also in that CMA, I have a net sheet and it, it shows the 5% plus escrow title fees. And that's all laid out so that they will know uh, what, their, what their net is going to be after, after all of these costs. So I go through that uh, commission, see if there's any questions. And then I close my last, my ending is my satisfaction guarantee. That's the last page in my market analysis where uh, it states that, uh, you know, when you work with Durf and Danny, we guarantee you hardworking ethical service, or you can cancel the listing at any time. So that's a really effective close um, because you're gonna be asking for a six month listing, which I've never gotten an objection to because I have that cancellation uh, in there. Uh, when I first started out, um, uh, Charlie uh, Richardson used to say, Oh, you got to get a 90 day, you got to get a 90 day listing, you know, when you, when, when you get a listing. And I remember you now I'm 20 years old, I'm going into that, my, one of my first listing appointments and, you know, telling him how great I am and how great Frederick Realty is. And, and, you know, we want to list this for 90 days. And the seller 
says, well, Durf, if you're so great, why don't we just list it for 30 days? Right? Well, you know, crickets, I, I had no response. I, I, had, I had nothing to come back to him with. And, and so I learned at an early age that it, when you put in this satisfaction guarantee, there's no problem in getting that, that uh, six month listing. And the reality is, is if a seller doesn't want to sell their home, whether it's a week after the listing or three months after the listing, your, your manager, your broker is going to cancel that listing anyway. So use it to your advantage. Okay, so uh, basically that's it. You, you've determined price, you've gone over your stuff, you, you list the property and you walk away with that, uh, with that listing or another appointment. Um, questions, comments on that so far? Yes, hi, Carol. Hi. Thank you, Danny. Um, I don't usually give them the price in the, in the, in the presentation booklet. I, it depends on who I'm sending it to because many times I'll send the comps, I'll email the comps to them. And then when we go to discuss it, we can then discuss pricing. Uh, although I may have su suggested price in there, whether or not they've seen it, <laughs> whether or not they've read through it, because I do notice on your CMA that you include that. Has that ever been a problem? I mean, obviously. Well, you know, we both, we both trained under this, the, the same uh, trainers over the years. And that's <laughs> the way I was trained is that you, you never uh, give away your hand, right? right. You, you close asking them. You know what they're and that's why i brought that up i go hey you've seen the comps you know what do you think the price is and then you can go back and correct it if they're too high or you can be the hero and say well you know i would i would list it at this price that's the way i was trained right but over the years um i've found that more of my clients uh especially when i there was about a 10-year period when all i did was income properties Right. And yeah. so I didn't get that. I didn't get that luxury of meeting with them. A lot of times they were out of state. So I had to put together a booklet that was impressive because, you know, everybody's sending out information on their properties, something that was impressive that they would keep and they would hold on to. And when, and hopefully they would think of me uh, because they weren't able to see my lovely face and, and hear my lovely presentation. And so uh, after doing this over a few years, it's like, I just put it right in the front and I say, hey, this is this is my summary page. You know, this house, your, your property is worth five hundred thousand dollars. And then they, they you get into the meat of it and it explains it. So I agree with you. I agree with you, you, Carol. Well, in that case, would you then be listing it at the, say, the 550 number that they wanted? Well, uh, again, that depends on the marketplace. So. Mm -hmm. Today, um, at that five hundred thousand, I would love to list it at that price or, you know, um, as we were taught- I have a buyer. <laughs> yeah, as, as we were taught, you know, hey, can you invest $1,000 in some marketing? Let's make it 499, you know? Mm -hmm. And so then you get into the discussion about today's market and how we want to get multiple offers. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to go 520 or 525 at that higher price and have to come down. So um, that depends on the marketplace. So it's not always that, that price, uh, you know, Dan, one thing that Danny taught me, this is a few years ago before this market got as hot as it is, is to list it much lower because um, uh, you, you'll get those multiple offers. And especially today, I mean, there's a lot of agents out there that don't know what they're doing and it's important to choose the agent. And, and when I'm looking at offers, in fact, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that uh, on these multiple offers. That's the first thing I look at is, is who's bringing in this offer? You know, if I get multiple offers, you know, whether the property sells for 490, 500, 525, I could care less. Obviously the seller cares, but I'm, I'm more concerned that that property is gonna close. You know, that, that we're not, uh, we don't have just some, some Yahoo agent doesn't know what they're doing or a buyer that may not be qualified uh, and just throwing stuff up against the wall. So for me, it's that, it's that agent. And getting back to your, what was your question? I think I passed over it. <laughs> I was just going to say that my last sale, I felt that it was worth in the mid nines and that was a push. As beautiful as it was, it was just competing against 
larger homes in the same multiple listing area and they wanted to list it at they felt it was worth a million and I gagged <laughs> I literally I said you know I think that's a little too high so we listed it at 999 and I talked to them about pricing it for multiple offers I talked to them about you know, uh, making sure that we can get multiple offers by bringing it in this price range. I wanted to get under 950. No, we didn't get there. We luckily sold, we sold in the mid nine, 900s, about a little higher than what I thought, but it was like, excuse me? <laughs> Cause yeah. I have a wife thinking one thing and the husband agreeing with me. So what did we do? We went with the wife and it ended up selling but we didn't have multiple offers. We had one good offer. Yeah. Well, obviously, yeah, obviously you were high in, in the marketplace. Right. And I mean, it, it happens to us also, Danny and I, you know, as as much as we convince them or try to convince them to, to price it at market so that we'll mm -hmm. get multiple offers, you know, there's sellers out there that say, oh, no, I want to try, you know, for $100,000 more or whatever. So as we know, and as we were taught, when you do that, you, you you don't walk away from the listing, especially in today's market, mm -hmm. but you focus on, oh, great, you know, I'll be glad to market it at $600,000, but I'm going to give you uh, weekly updates as to the market, and I'm going to be you know, hitting you up every, every week if we're not getting any offers to reduce that price. And you have to do that because if you don't reduce that price within that first 30 days, by talking to them every few days about the marketplace, you're going to lose that client. You know, they're going to get disgruntled and that nothing's happening on this listing. The reality is it's their fault, but you, you need to make sure that, that they hear from you every week with facts and figures as to what that uh, market value is. And uh, one thing that, another thing that Danny has taught me is uh, he, he uses the MLS uh, hits, you know, how, how when you set up your buyers for these auto emails, as a listing agent, you get hits from the number of uh, uh, potential buyers that are out there. And the MLS has some great graphs and charts that you can use. And so every week, you, if, you, if you're overpriced, you present that uh, information to your seller and say, hey, look, this last week, you know, we only got three hits. Our typical listing gets 120 hits and show them. You, know, you can't tell them we're, we're salespeople and nobody likes salespeople, but you have to show that you have to show that to your client and say, hey, this is another, and, you know, we've got lots of listings in the company, use anybody's listing, but show them that, hey, look at this property, this one just sold. And the first week it had 150 hits uh, on it and you had three hits. So you, you can show them and show them the graph uh, and, and there's excellent um, uh, uh, graphs and charts uh, that are available uh, to, to show them to keep working that seller to get their price uh, down to a more reasonable, a more reasonable price. Mm -hmm. Comments, questions? Um, uh, Danny, where do you find that? Because I've never used that. Is it if you go under the listing, uh, my listing? You go to the my hit counters, you'll see all of the auto emails that go out. Um, obviously, you're going to see people that are TRG agents that are just looking at TRG listings. So you'll see me on there, but it also gives a tracking number to the reverse prospecting. So you can see how many people they actually have in their list. And it updates every 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. So you can see if it keeps tracking up, it's obviously getting better. If you reduce the price, those all emails will go out again. So you're getting a whole new pool of people. And that's kind of one of the big things that we push is like the coming soon is kind of useless because when you list a property or reduce a property, you're getting a new pool of buyers. So to them, even if it's on the market for 30 days, this is still day one that they've seen the property. So that using that data to track everything is easier to see. Yeah, so if, if you have a specific listing, uh, uh, call me or call Danny and we can, we can show you how to, how to access that. Uh, ho hopefully in this marketplace, you know, you won't have any of these overpriced listings. Uh, and just, just to kind of show you what's going on, uh, last one Danny and I did was over in Marble Estates. The seller was watching uh, online all the different values, 
he, he uh, came up, we both came up with 1.2 uh, million for the value of the property, which was a high, a high price in that, in that neighborhood. And uh, we, we ended up selling it at 1.3. And that was, you know, with seller agreeing to the price. I think we listed it just under like 1.199 or something because we figured, oh, it might sell in the low 1.2. And we had multiple offers and, and it, it closed successfully at 1.3. So uh, you, you, we have that luxury right now of, of having so many more buyers than, than we have listings. So even if you're off a little bit on that, on that price, you'll, you'll, still, you'll still get it. And if you're in that $500,000 range, uh, Elva listed one, um, I think it. I think she figured the value was around five hundred thousand, right? And four sixty. Yeah, four. It was, list, it was listed at four eighty five. She had seventeen offers. My little five hundred thousand, which was which it would compact. It was, which is probably market, right? The market was five hundred. She did everything right. She listed yeah. at four eighty. She saw what she told you, but the offers were like six hundred thousand dollars. So yes. it's, it's crazy, yes. it, it's just crazy I, prices. I was part of it, so it was debilitating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, that, that's what you're up against. So, I mean, this is, this is an incredible market, guys. Uh, you know, we've, we've been doing this a long time and, and when these properties sell this quickly and have these multiple offers, this is, this is um, a, a very unusual market here with these low, low rates. Okay, so a couple other things I wanna, I wanna hit on. Maybe if we have some time, we'll do the uh, some multiple offers here. Whenever you're meeting with your seller, always I always bring a booklet with them. You know, rather than just my business card, give them a seller's booklet. Uh, the title company uh, uh, has these free booklets uh, that you can say, you know, it's a seller's booklets. We have five seller booklets and we have five buyer booklets on our website, on the TRG website that you can print out. These are generic, you can print your name on there, put your uh, profile sheet on the back. You should always have something that, that, you're, that you're giving to your, your client, whether it's a buyer or a seller, each time that you meet them. Uh, we have a, our own brochure, Keith and, and Carol, they have their own brochures. You give them that on, your, on that first meeting. And so every time you're seeing them, you're, you're giving them more uh, in, information. So make sure you, you have that. Uh, also, when you, when you list that property, to, it's important to have that follow-up. And a, as you guys uh, know, some, some clients need to be talked to every day, right? And, and others, you know, once a week. So you've got to determine that from the type of client that, that you have, whether they need that hand-holding and have a contact daily or every Friday or whatever. Um, a, a little tidbit here, if you get a client that needs that daily contact or they're calling you, Clients should not be calling you. Uh, you, you know, that's one way to judge uh, your effectiveness and your professionalism. If they're calling you every day, then you need to adjust your schedule so that you can talk to them and call them on your time. And what I do for those that really need the handholding, I'll, I'll say, hey, you know, I'll, I'll call you uh, every night at five or every morning at nine o'clock every day. So, you know, any questions that you have during the day, save them so that when I call you and then and that way you're controlling that, that client that really needs that, that hand-holding. Um, most clients, it's on a weekly basis, uh, but you know, in today's world, it's also important to find out how, how to communicate with them. Uh, do they want texts? Do they, do they want a phone call? Uh, we've, got a, we've got a client now that uh, she wants to be called on the phone. You know, she doesn't take texts or, or emails or anything. It's gotta be a phone call. So that, that's unusual uh, in today's world, but you gotta be able to communicate with your clients and communicate the way that they want to, to hear you. Uh, mostly it's, it's by emails are, are, are fine for most clients, but that's important. So you gotta, you gotta check, that, uh, check that box. Okay. Um, rather than writing the offers, let's, let's talk just a little bit about multiple, uh, multiple offers. Then, Michael, did you have any other questions on the? Okay, so how, how um, Carol and Keith, as the, as the veterans here, how do you guys uh, handle multiple offers? Go ahead, Keith. You're on. Okay. Um, usually, I 
uh, acknowledge the offer first to, to back to the, the agent that presented the offer, let them know I got the offer and um, we're going to be presenting it and let them know when we're going to have a presentation of the offers to the seller. And I try to make offer, I put it in the listing, offers are going to be presented X, X date at six o'clock. Excellent, yeah. I try, try to get in, in at least two weekends for showings. Good. Carol, anything else you want to add? Usually what I'll do is along with what Keith just said, is I'll go ahead and as an offer comes in, I'll send it to my client with a little email recap so they can have that. And, and I'm not printing anything, assuming that they are computer savvy. And that way we can, we can sit, when the time comes, they've got what they need. I still do a recap with them and we review the offers theoretically in the, in the, in the order that they came in. Now, in a lot of cases, I've actually told the agents, I said, bring me a good offer and we'll accept it right away. <laughs> yeah. Well, good. I, I, I agree with, with all that. Keith, comment? You want to unmute uh, Keith? But hold, hold on a second, Keith. Wait, wait, wait a second. I got, you got to unmute yourself there, Keith. Space bar works too. Right by the space bar. You hit spacebar or you can hit the microphone. There, there, there I go. For some, I don't know how that happened. But anyhow, <laughs> I, I didn't finish my thought. At, as soon as I notified the agent that I received the offer, I let the sellers know that, hey, we got an offer. Good. We, we're, we still got some time. We can get better offers. Let's kind of kind of roll with it. And uh, usually they're, they're, that's acceptable. And then we sit down and we re review the offers. And I make my comments to them, say, okay, this is this price, you're gonna net this, blah, 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 blah. And let give them the picture of what's what's going on. And then I forward the offer that sounds best to them, to them for their review and signature. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, I, I I basically do the do the same thing that you guys do. Um, this is a, a relatively new form that uh, zip forms has where you can provide this. This is when you actually meet with them a week after your marketing, where it kind of gives an outline of the uh, of all the offers that you've received, just the, the the high points of it as far as value, and it puts it in in uh, a better comparison mode. Um, unlike Carol, I don't really care whether the offer came in first or last, but I do forward it like you guys do. I forward that yeah, to the seller so that they get a chance to look at it. And, and uh, like you guys, I tell them, you know, hey, we're, we're gonna present these on, on Friday. And also uh, like you guys mentioned, it's, it's very important that you have that communication with that buyer's agent and, and let them know uh, that you've received the offer. Thank you very much. You know, your offer number one or your offer number five and that we're gonna be presenting on Friday. And I make it a point I make it a point to uh, email them every day and say, uh, you know, we today we have three we have a total of three offers we're presenting on Friday, and I give them the way that these offers are going to be presented. Um, Dan, how you doing there? <laughs> Sorry, uh, it reminds me of my El Camino class. There's always that one student that's nodding off there in class. Uh, so. Uh, uh, where was I? Uh, so okay, so I so I I, uh, I I email all of the buyers agents and I let them know uh, what what the process is, and I tell them via email, and I copy everybody to because you know when you're getting up to fourteen fifteen offers, it gets kind of hairy, so you want to be able to just copy one email and send it out to everybody. But I do that on a daily basis so that they know. You know, we now have you know, six offers, we now have 12 offers. And come Friday, we're going to accept or counter the best offer. So in other words, I give them that heads up that we're not gonna do this multiple counter stuff that a lot of agents do and put everything off for another week. Or we're not gonna illegally 
write on that counter offer, you know, give me best and final next Tuesday, right? Which is a, a bogus offer and, and causes all kinds of problems if they accept that. So uh, via email, I explain what my process is. And that way, if they wanna make a change, they know that they've got, you know, Friday at five o'clock, if they wanna redo that first page and bump the price up or change terms, um, uh, they know that, hey, there's 14 offers on this. I was number one, I was the first one to come in here, but now there's 14. Maybe we wanna be a little more aggressive on price or terms or whatever. So uh, I, I appreciate that. And that's one thing I do when I'm working with the buyer is I like to get that information from the seller's <coughs> agent. And a lot of times, you know, the seller's agents, they don't talk to you or they don't disclose anything. Uh, but I will tell them, like, uh, like Carol says, sometimes you don't have any offers. I, I'll say, hey, you know, we're, we, we, we want an offer. This seller is, is, is hot to trot. Uh, you know, send us something and we'll, we'll review it tonight. Yes, Carol. There's one more thing that I do. When I receive the offer, I assume I'm going to have a, a pre-approval letter of some kind. I will call the buyer's lender right then. Oh, good. And have a conversation with the buyer's lender that basically says, what would stop you from closing this escrow? Or do you think the buyer can qualify if we were to counter them at X price? I have no idea what the seller is going to do, but I'm just throwing it out there as a possibility. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good. That's a good point. And yeah. I want... I also want to know that I feel comfortable with this lender because yes. some lenders that you just think, I don't know. Well, that's even more important when you have- I, I would expect. <laughs> yeah, that's even more important when you have multiple offers because there's a lot of lenders that'll probably never call you back just like the agents. And if an agent, you know, if I have multiple offers and an agent calls me back when I'm asking for clarification on, on what they presented, and they don't, you know, it takes them three days to call me back. It's like, hey, I'm not dealing with you. I'm not going to go through a 30-day escrow if, when I have all these other offers. Um, and, and so that's what, when we started this, I think it's really important for the agent, if it's uh, an agent that we know, that we've dealt with before, or that has good referrals, or that we've worked with them at the board or whatever the situation is, I'm going to push to get them up to the price that's acceptable to the seller uh, above these other offers versus somebody that's just out of the blue that may have a brand new license. Uh, you know, Danny always checks their, uh, uh, their license number to see how long they've been in the business. Um, uh, so that, that's number one for me when I'm looking at these offers is, is um, uh, who the agent is that's representing it. Okay, so um, uh, we've got these multiple offers. Um, I am going to typically just counter the best offer, right? And I'm going to call that agent up and say, hey, it looks like uh, uh, you've got it. If you're willing to uh, you know, come up $5,000 or you're willing to remove all conditions by such and such date, um, then we're, we'll, we'll go with you. And typically they will get that signed that day or that night and you go into escrow the next day. If not, then you move on down to the next, to the next buyer. Uh, and this is on our zip forms online, this is what I'm looking for, for a counter offer. So basically you're just naming services and you're providing specific dates. So don't, don't just use the 30 day escrow period, pick a date that's on a Tuesday through Friday to close. We don't wanna close on a Monday because they have to fund on a Friday to do that. So pick a Tuesday through Friday. It avoids problems down the road because when you say 30 days, you know, there's a good chance it's going to end up on a on a Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. Uh, you almost got a 50-50 shot there, and uh, this will avoid those problems. Also, if you know that if you know the contract, there's three conditions: here you have your inspections, you have your loan, and you have your appraisal. Um, and each the the loan is 21 days is the default, while the, whereas the inspection and the appraisal the default is 17 days. Uh, that's going to be corrected, by the way, in the new purchase agreement that's supposed to come at the end of the year. But pick a date. Pick a date as to when all conditions are going to be removed. And hopefully you can do it within 10 days or so. Um, and and when I, if I put my buyer's cap on and I'm writing an offer for a buyer, that's what I'm going to be writing, where they can remove all of their conditions in a week or, or 10 days and, and move on. That means that buyer has to be pre-approved um, or a direct underwritten 
and typically uh, uh, they don't even need an appraisal if they've got enough money uh, or we get that appraisal ordered right away and inspections can be done in just a few days. So there should be no reason that you can't remove all conditions if you have a well-qualified buyer uh, within just a few days. And, and that's how you've got a better chance of getting that offer, that offer accepted. Okay. Um, let me go over my notes here. Oh, another thing, I, you know, I always like when I have these multiple offers um, in one of those emails, I, I, let, them, I let them know uh, because I'm asked this a lot is that, uh, you know, we have 14 offers and I'm not representing any of them. I tell them that, you know, we don't, we're, we're, there's no dual agency on any of these offers because um, a lot of times agents will ask that because they think they're not going to be treated fairly. And so, you know, uh, if that's true, volunteer that information. Uh, that'll, that'll um, I think it's a more professional representation uh, when you're representing that seller and dealing with that buyer's agent. Um, Okay, I've gone through my multiple offers. Uh, any questions, co comments, anything else you want me to hit on while, while you've got me here? Okay, thank you guys. Uh, make it a great day. Appreciate your attendance. We're gonna record this and have, have copies of it also. Good day. Thank you.